This is Lee with 82 Gaming 12. We're going to take a look at another Revolution Games uh, production. Kernstown is actually uh, includes two battles of the American Civil War. The first battle took place uh, March the 23rd, 1862. And then the second took place in July the 24th, 1864. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm actually going to simulate uh, the first battle, which is uh, March the 23rd, 1862, which involved Thomas Jonathan Jackson and part of what was his uh, Valley Campaign in the Shenandoah Valley. So uh, this is a battle that uh, he lost he uh, was misinformed of uh, the strength of the Union by uh, Ash Ashby, and <clears throat> he failed to verify the uh, numbers of the enemy, and uh, this is what's going to cost uh, the uh, Confederates see this battle. They're going to have to with, withdraw, and uh, they also took uh, the higher number of casualties. So, I've got uh, let me pull back here. Let's go the other way. We'll take a look at the at the uh, map and uh, and so forth. First, I wanted to to uh, show you, of course, this book, uh, Stonewall Jackson is a Military Commander by John Selby. It's a Barnes and Nobles book. It uh, was published, uh, let's see, eight, 1986. Uh, information there about that. And uh, what uh, I wanted to show you was a couple of things, but one thing was the uh, the artwork that's on the front of this uh, game, whether it be the Ziploc or the boxed version, is this drawing here. And as you can see in this picture from the book, there's a crease. So apparently this drawing came from uh, like a notebook uh, that the artist uh, used, and uh, the artist is Alfred R. Ward uh, from 1828 to 1891. That's his his uh, birth and then death. But uh, this is the image that's on the uh, box cover or the Ziploc cover, and uh, so want to show that and then of course we've got the uh, <clears throat> commanders and formations so we've got uh, the number of confederates that were there a little over 3,000 and uh, since uh, 2700 that uh, were engaged so you got uh, Major General TJ Jackson and uh, he's got uh, four brigades there first one uh, is under uh, Garnett uh, and then you have Burks, and then Fulkerson, and then the Calvary, you've got Ashby. And uh, under Ashby, you've got Choose Three Guns as horse artillery. And uh, part of the rules is that you can allow the Choose counter to have uh, eight movement points. Then we have the Federals, uh, 7,000 under Shields. And I guess that's with Kimball uh, there, too. And uh, so I guess Kimball is actually the one that was in charge, uh, I guess. Uh, let's see. What was it? Was Shields not there on the field? Something like that. So you got Kimball, Sullivan, and then Tyler. Tyler's uh, brigade is going to come in. 
uh, as reinforcements uh, on the second turn, and they are rather large. That brigade is rather large. So, casualties you've got uh, for the Confederates 718, and for the Federals uh, 590. So, and then we've got the actual. Uh, we've got a uh, actual. We've got a uh, map, drawn map of the uh, of the battle. So here we've got the turnpike coming through here. Okay, Valley Turnpike. We've got Kerns, Kernstein, Kernstown right here. Here's Pritchard's Hill, and over here is uh, the Sandy Ridge, and of course you have the wall stretching across here. That's where. The fighting took place trying to gain control over the Sandy Ridge. It was the higher ground. And then down here we've got uh, Bartonsville, which is not on this map. Um, but that shows you, uh, you've got uh, Ashby and the cavalry uh, basically stayed on this side of the, of the battle while Jackson uh, <coughs> brought up troops to take control over the Sandy Ridge. Uh, <clears throat> so there that is and we're going to talk about uh, the uh, overall uh, uh, objectives and so forth in the game and uh, <clears throat> so let's take a look at the at the map itself this is a <clears throat> Rick Barber map And so here we've got the turnpike coming through here. Uh, here's, of course, Kerns, Kernstown. And we've got the setup of uh, the forces. Now, some of these forces here on this uh, south end, this is the south end at this end. The north end's up here, uh, west here and east over here. You've got uh, restrictions on Pleasanton's... <clears throat> um, or Pleasants, not Pleasantons, but Pleasants, and Lanier's <clears throat> artillery guns, okay? So, they have a restriction with the 5th Virginians of Garnett, and then the under here, we've got the 42nd Virginians under Burks. They can't move <clears throat> until, I think it's the 530 turn. Let's see here. No, not until the 540 turn. They're frozen. However, if Sullivan, I'm gonna pull him out. Sullivan's got this, um, he's got two, basically two ratings, a three and a one. If I can get even there, three and a one. Now he starts out with the one command rating because he was instructed to, to hold his ground okay and so if the union player decides that they want to use the higher rating and let him move around let him move his brigade around then they can do that but they're going to release these the confederate forces so the union player has to decide whether or not he's going to you know leave leave uh, Sullivan in, in his place which puts him at danger at maybe being overrun or, you know, attacked from a flank or something. So that's some command decisions you have to make. Um, the uh, brigade reserve movement can't be played on Sullivan. He can't be forced to uh, move back based on the key, uh, one of those uh, event chips. So he's, he has to use that number one rating the entire scenario. Now, if he's attacked or a Confederate unit moves within three hexes, uh, Pritchard's Hill. You say, well, where's Pritchard's Hill? Okay, here's Pritchard's Hill right here. This is a command, uh, this is a uh, objective hex. I'm gonna talk about that. Then Sullivan can, uses three rating uh, and 
and uh, and this can happen in the middle of a turn while he's still in draw cup. So the Confederates have to decide whether or not they want to, you know, allow Sullivan, you know, to have that higher rating. So I guess the Union can't just decide. They have to wait to, to see what the Confederates do. If they, they uh, attack... Sullivan, one of his units, or if they um, move within three hexes of uh, Pritchard's Hill. So, there that is. Um, something else here we have, um, we've got uh, just to talk about some of the other, I guess we'll go ahead and talk about, uh, I was going to mention some other things here. We've got... Uh, of course, uh, Sandy Ridge over over here. And let's see, I may have to do something else here with this thing here. Yeah. That's gonna work. Um So Sandy Ridge, you've got the wall. You've got quite a few walls throughout this map, but uh, this wall here uh, is vital because of the victory points uh, that we're talking about. So you also have a wall here in front of uh, front of Pritchard's Hill. So, um, now talk about the, the victory points. Um, on the Sandy Ridge, of course you've got, there's six victory points here, there's two here, and then four over here by the wall. That's basically controlling the wall. The Confederate player re uh, receives one victory point per turn starting in the 3.20 p.m. turn. And uh, that's going to be, uh, let's see, the, we start out at turn five. It's actually turn 11. Um, each hex they hold uh, at the end of the turn, they get a point. Now, if the Confederates hold Pritchard's Hill, they don't get any points for those. So, Pritchard Hill, victory hex is right there, the victory point hex. Okay. So, now the Union, they get three points per turn for having that hex. And they start in control of all of the victory fixes. So, um, at the end of the 6 p.m. turn, if the Confederates do not hold Pritchard's Hill, they receive a one-time victory bonus based on the number of hexes held at, at, on the Sandy Ridge. Okay. So at six, at the end of 6 p.m., if they hold, hold one hex, they get eight bonus points. If they hold two of those hexes, 12, 3, 16, they hold four or more, they get 20 bonus point, points. Now, Pritchard's Hill. As I said, the Union player gets three points per turn for Pritchard's Hill. Right here. The Confederate player receives two points per turn. 
And then at the end of the 6 p.m. turn, the Confederates get 20 points if they hold that hex. So, basically the victory points are set up to show that Jackson needed either to hold Pritchard's Hill or the higher ground, which would be Sandy Hill, uh, Sandy Ridge. So, and then uh, there's points for uh, casualty victory points. Okay, one point for each enemy strength point on the broken track or permanently eliminated. And then uh, enemy troop withdrawals, if they leave the map, one victory point for every 10 strength points exited. And when they exit, it's going to be uh, the points that the, the counter's on, whether they flipped over to Battle Warren or so it's not going to be always the full strength. They exit uh, Battle War, and then it's going to be the lower number of points. So. And then you just uh, subtract the Union points from the Confederate points to get the uh, victory. So, um, let's see here. Each uh, side will uh, select two key chips and then randomly draw three. I'm just going to randomly draw five. And uh, the uh, low ammo, find ammo, and union low ammo, Confederate low ammo chips uh, don't become uh, effective until the 5 p.m. turn. So, and the Confederate Confident chip is not used in the game, and neither is the Union Quick March chip. So, and I think this game, let's see, every each turn is 20 minutes long. I know some of the games it's 30. And also movement is going to vary. Uh, we've got uh, Orchard and Light. Woods, here's the orchard here, light woods. Light woods is just uh, uh, an orchard uh, obscu obscure, unless you're going through two hexes, two or more hexes of uh, light woods or, or orchard uh, for line of sight. It's just gonna be obscured. So you can see through, uh, you can see through this uh, light woods hex to the hexes behind it on the other side. And also uh, artillery and cavalry are allowed into uh, those hexes. Unlike some games where they're not allowed. So. It's just gonna cost them. It's just gonna cost them more the movement points. And if you've got any of the newer games, I guess uh, we don't have the attack coordination uh, in that you might find in um, like Bull Run, as the, the day was ours. Um, so, okay. So leader wise, uh, if we look over here. Uh, we've got, of course, the Union has uh, Broadhead, Sullivan, and Kimball, while the uh, Confederates have Burks, Garnett, Fulkerson, Ashby, and, of course, uh, the C and CIC, Jackson. Jackson's always going to be uh, activated. Uh, the others have to roll, of course. And then the one that's not there is Tyler. Tyler's over here on the track. He'll come in next turn. So, all right. Now, uh, I have a different setup here. I don't have uh, my normal camera. I guess holder. I'm trying to come up with what you would call it, but so. 
Let's talk a little bit here about, uh, let's see, here. we've got to find the, uh, I guess it's back here. Well, where is it? Before you talk about the scenarios. Oh yeah. So here we've got uh, game research and design, Claude Templeton Whalen, game map, Rich Barber, game counters, Charles Keebler, game development, Roger Miller, and then a Chief playtester play is Stephen uh, Porniger, and Herman Lutman was the, uh, or is the creator of the system, the Blind Sword system. So. All right. I'm putting uh, the leaders in the cups here. Jackson goes in, and then we got to uh, we got the Fog of War and Fortunes of War goes in, and then we have the Union ships. We've got five of them, just random. Normally you would draw, you would pick two, and then randomly add three more, but. Uh, just playing solo here. I'm just going to add three, uh, five random chips. And then I put them over here out of the way where I can't see really what they are. And then we can get started. So we've got the Union uh, artillery phase. They start. So, the um, um, we've got uh, Davy, which is the first West Virginia. Uh, I guess it's uh, just part of the battery. Four guns is to get started. It's divided into A and B. Yeah. So. And I don't have my tweezers, so I've just got to use it with my, move it with my hands. So my hand probably getting away some of this. And um, let's see, he could fire on Ashby. Ashby's in his range. Yeah, I guess, uh, and I don't have my little blocks either, so. Um, I just have to show you like, okay, uh, uh, Davey here is gonna fire at um, two, three, four, five. Pull back so you can see. Yeah, he's gonna fire right here. At the seventh. Virginia, okay, they're actually split into two groups, A and B. So he's going to fire at the A group here. And we've got, um, uh, put this out in the open. So he's got rifled. So he's up to see rifle. 
up to seven. So he's gonna just be a four. Uh, column shifts. Um, so he starts at four, but we get a two column shift for Calvary. So he's at six, seven. Oh, look at this. I tell you what, my rolling of sixes, 66. So he's got a, he's a five cohesion. So that's gonna be uh, just routine. Uh, 42, no result. All right, so I turn him. And then let's see here. Um, artillery have a of a movement of six, uh, unless this, is, except for this chew here, he's got a horse head on him, so he's horse artillery, so he's got a movement of eight. Mm. Let's see the McLaughlin there, with the Rock Ridge, he's mixed. So he's got an effective range of seven. So I think I want to move him up here. So we're gonna go, uh, he's here. We're gonna go one, two, three, uh, four, five. Let's see, well, let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Six, he could actually go there. So he went. Um, and then we've got that artillery unit way back there. I want to move him up. That's him right here. So he can go one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, turn him. We pull back to here. And you have to start thinking, do you want to take Pritchard's heel? Attack Sullivan.
Well, let's see here. Chew doesn't really, he doesn't have a shot. Now these guys do. They can shoot at Davy. It would be one, two, three, four, five, six. I think that's what they're gonna do. They can't move, so they might as well shoot. Okay, so. Just says they're frozen in place. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and they're smooth bore and mixed. Uh, smooth bore still has a range of six, so that's still affected. So that's going to be four and four. And so this is going to be, they're going to fire here to here. So that's eight. I don't have any plus or minus. 26 is what they rolled. So he's got a two though. So that's gonna be routine. The rolled a 55. It's gonna be demoral uh, depleted and retreats to. So he gets depleted. Retreats. All right, so. Um. Well, I guess, let's see. This guy's rifled. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He would be at a two. Let's see. Yeah. I guess he'll fire. All right, so we're gonna have Clark firing here at uh, McLaughlin. He's uh, got to be halved, so now he's at a two. Look at this, rolled another 60, this is 65. So, he's not supported, so he's got a two. So it's gonna be uh, routine. 52 is depleted. So, depleted the, uh, the big artillery uh, piece there. That's what happens, you bring him out in the open rather quickly. Okay, should have put him in the uh, light woods. It would have gave you some protection. Um, I think it would have gave you some protection. Yeah, sure would have. All right, back down here. Um, Yeah, uh, we're gonna move two, one, two, three, four, five. He's gonna move right there. Oops, just turning, don't believe me. All right. Now Jinx is gonna fire right here. He's got rifled. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, no, 
Okay, so he's gonna also be halved. Forty-two. Uh, let's see. Well, yeah, he does get a routine because he's unsupported. He's firing right here. Fifty-five. So that'll be a retreat, retreat, retreat two. But he's. All right, he's going to the broken box two. So they took out the big gun, big Confederate gun. Um, Guys are all gonna go together. Six. Right there. The way they're obscured. Um Robinson. Right there. Robinson on Pritchard Hill is going to fire down here at uh, Chew. So, count the hexes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Be nine hexes. And he is a smoothbore. Let's see. So he's gonna be long range, so he's gonna be firing it with a three. Over 51. Let's see, two is gonna be a two, so yeah, that's gonna be routine. 35. Let's gonna cause him to retreat to. Back to there. So Robinson turns over. Um, I think that may be all of the artillery. Yeah. Okay, so now we go to um, Draw. First draw, firefight, Confederates. So they want to hold on to that. So I'll just put it off here to the side here. Next is the Union firefight. Okay, they're going to hold on to it. And the person coming out of here is Garnett. So we got to roll to see if Garnett gets a full activation. And I rolled a five, four, so full activation. Uh, this one here can't move. Um, but his other four regiments over here can. So, and... Uh, I guess I'm gonna give him a, a maneuver order. <clears throat> and let's 
look here and see. See if it tells us. Um, okay, so the thicker, thicker, these are roads. And uh, the trails are gonna be like, like this. So the roads, we can actually go, we can move our, do our uh, march orders on. So. Now do we wanna take Sandy Ridge <clears throat> and just leave Pritchard's Hill alone and not tax Sullivan? going to get three points, but I think it's going to be hard for me to take Pritchard's Hill with those. He's got that artillery there. Um, yeah, I guess I could try. We don't if we just take Pritchard's Hill, we don't have to worry about <clears throat> we don't have to worry about uh <clears throat> moving over there to the Sandy Ridge. <clears throat> we can just go right up right up the road here. <clears throat> and try to just push uh push them back. So I think I'm gonna try that tactic. So a little different from the historical. <clears throat> okay, so Okay, so if we maneuver we get six all we get is six movement points. slope cost is plus one. So we go one, two, three. Four. Five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, Two, three, four, five, six. So he can go one, two, three, four, five, six, there. And then Gar Garnett is done. No? Yeah. Rubble Yell. Okay, I'm just gonna hold that. Fog of War. Okay, and uh, let's see, it's uh, the 130 turn, so that's the Confederates. Roll to three, see if it's the same. Yeah. Okay, a wayward union move. I think that's just where um, it's going to be where they can just move uh, one unit in any direction, wherever they want. So we could just take a unit and move it somewhere.
I'll move that gun over there. All right. I'm off of Pritchard's, off of Pritchard's heel. Next. Okay, Fortunes of War. Next to is disregarded. And that's gonna be uh, Brigade Reserve Movement. For the Union. Next we've got uh, Command Confusion. For the uh, Confederates. Okay, next pull, firefight, another firefight for the Confederates. Then we have Jackson. Jackson, I can either move or I gotta hold on to that one. Hold on to Jackson. All right, we've got uh, rally by the Union. Um, so I could try to rebuild with the rally. I can try to rebuild. Um, Infantry and cavalry only on the rebuild. So, I don't have anybody to rebuild right now, so they're just gonna have to hold that. All right, we got Kimball. Let's see if we get a full activation with Kimball. I uh, rolled a six, so they don't. All they can do, all Kimball can do is a Fire, which he's got nobody in range, so he um, he's done. Put him over there. Okay, now we got confident for the Union. Let's see what that means. Okay. This is going to be used after a close combat. Then we got Heroic Stand for the Union. Play is needed for any U USA infantry unit that is affected by any cohesion test dice roll. Playing this chip will force a reroll. Of either one or both of the dice. Okay. Okay, we got Sullivan. Right now, Sullivan is at a one. I rolled a three. So he's got a limited activation. So no one is in range. So can't do anything. Ah, we got Ashby. So, Ashby. Let's pull back here. Let's see what he gets to do. I rolled a three, so he passes.
Now you got these guys in skirmish order. And uh, it says that they just retreat. They just keep retreating. I don't, I was just wondering about, could they be run down by cavalry? It doesn't, it doesn't say that. Units in skirmish order have never engaged in close combat. So. Again, it says when they withdraw, they, they don't have to, they're not, uh, they don't suffer opportunity fire. So, they would just keep retreating until they couldn't retreat anymore. Now, with uh, cavalry, the charge, they can't get the charge. Uh, if they go any over any kind of slope or the defenders up uh, where they're attacking across the slope hex side. So, you know, they've got to get in a position where they can just flat out attack without moving across the slope. Okay, they're gonna maneuver in a position where they can then maybe next turn or something do a, or I can use Jackson though, see, so where I could attack them, charge them. Um, so we're gonna go, okay, they got a movement of nine. Um, when they go up a slope though, up a slope for Calvary is plus two. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And this one, one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven. Three, four, five, six. Three, four, five, six. Okay. All right. So Ashby is done. But Jackson is now going to come in and use it. They're going to use his CIC chip. And we're gonna do charges here. So, well, no, yeah, no. Shoot. Well, yeah, he can. He's just gonna be, he gets shot at. Hmm. 
didn't think about that. Tell you what, instead of using Jackson there, Jackson's gonna actually gonna move Burks in a maneuver. Um, he can move three of them. Um, so, 42nd has to stay. So, he can go, uh, one, let's see, he's gonna go one, two, three, four, five, right there. Um, this one, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, no, no, can't move him. He's got to stay. Okay, one, so one, two, three, four, five, six. And then one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So that's Jackson's move. And next, we got Fulkerson. And he's got to roll a four or less. Roll a two. So he can, uh, you know, he can move up to help assault. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, I think we're going to be close enough. Except for maybe Burks. Rally. I don't have anybody to rally. Yep. Now I've got Burks. Come Broadhead didn't go, oh, he's still in there. Okay. So Burks. I gotta roll to see if Burks is just to activate his guys or not. Nope, roll to five. Limited activation. So, Burks is finished. And then we have Broadhead. And he can activate, which he wants to move. Okay, so Broadhead has... We're looking at uh, right here. He's gonna do a maneuver. Um, so when he maneuvers, He's got nine. So one, two, three, four, four, five. He moves beside Kimball there. Okay. And then here up the pike, he's got two units. Um, so one, two, Three, four, five, six. So we're at six. Go back six. Six. 
six. Six, seven, eight, nine. Right there. Actually, we want to do it like that. Okay. Oh, and I've got the other one over there. Missed that one. So he can go one, two, three, four, five, five, six, 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 five, six, seven, eight. He goes to right there. Okay. Well, I could have used uh, command confusion, but all right, we don't have anything to rally. Um, uh, really, we don't have anybody close enough to do uh, rebel yell. Firefight. Now the rifled guy, they do, but I don't. Got two firefights, a rally and a command command confusion. Don't have access to do any of those. Or yeah. So this first turn is just all those chips were wasted. Um now We've got somebody here. The Union can do a uh, firefight. What else did they have? So they can actually do. Uh, the 5th Ohio has rifles. So they can't see these guys, but they can see these guys. So they can fire on this Ashby's cavalry. They do that to get a plus. Let's see. Um, extreme range. So 25%. So he's going to be at a two. Okay, but he's firing target. So now he goes back up to, he goes up to four. So, 55, and his target is a 5, so no effect. Okay, so at least he tried, and I can't fire back, so. All right, so that takes care of the first uh, turn. It took roughly an hour, uh, a little less, because I did some yakking at the start, but that's where we're at. And the Confederates have decided just to push straight up to Kernstown and to try to take Pritchard's Hill and uh, not try to do a uh, maneuver. But to uh, just look to take Pritchard's Hill. So, the Union gained three points because they have control of Pritchard's Hill. So, at the present time, they're ahead three, three points. And so, we would then, uh, <clears throat> we don't have any, uh, See what we got here. Let me make sure. All right, so uh, we did the victory points. We got to flip over the activated brigade markers. 
roving track adjustment. And then we get gather up the event chips. So we only have one unit. McLaws is on uh, the broken track two, so they go to one. Just to show you that over there. So they were here. Here, I moved them here. Victory point. The turn now goes to, to the um, 140 turn, which means Tyler is now going to be in the mix. So we've got to add him to the cup. So then we turn over uh, like, okay, all the artillery. Um, I just flip them back around. Now I don't have plexiglass on, on here. All right, so <clears throat> we flip over the brigade activated markers. We put Tyler Broadhead, Solomon and Kimball in, Cup, Burks, Garnett, Ashby, Fulkerson, Stonewall Jackson, Fortunes of War, Fog of War. And then we gather up the Union event chips, shuffle them up. And normally I would pick two and then randomly go with three, but I'm just gonna Just randomly throw in five. Same thing for the Confederacy. Okay. Now we gotta find out where uh, Tyler is going to be entering in. Um, let's see here, let's go to his. Okay. 10, 14 at 140. Okay. So that's going to be up here at the uh, northern end of the turnpike. So that's where they're coming in at. Okay, so we do um, our artillery first, and the Union gets to activate their artillery first or one of them. Um, Dewey, D Dewey, Davey, he's not able to fire at the present time. Clark and, Jinx and Jenkins are Jinx. Not Jenkins, but Jinx. Okay, so I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire... with Clark, who's gonna fire at Fulkerson. No, he wants to fire at this one, the bigger one. Okay. All right, so he's got a rifle, so he's within effective range. And uh, we don't have any bonuses. We're not going through any, any kind of specific type of ground. What's this good ground, though? I need to identify what the good ground is. Does so turn the yeah. 
What is this good ground? Got to be over here on the fire uh, modifiers. Okay. Oh, shit. Oh, it's the good ground chit. That's what that is. Okay. Okay, so it's just gonna be straight up four. 12, no effect. So Clark's fourth, is that right? Fourth US E is turned over. Okay. Um, okay, let's. Let's go down here to, what's it? We've got uh, Pleasanton, Pleasance, Pleasance and Lanier are gonna shoot over Ashby to, to go towards Sullivan. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And they're mixed, smoothbore and mixed. So that's actually gonna be a uh, long range. So they're gonna be at a half, that's four. Okay. Um, Fifty percent are mixed artillery at long or extreme range. So yeah. So now we go from from eight. Okay, we go down to four. Now we're at three. Okay. Okay, firing over a non. Um, skirmish unit. So now we're at two. Fifty-four. Fifty-four and Sullivan's a three. It's actually a two. It's not with anybody, so it's going to be routine. So these two artillery units fired over the top of Ashby to hit Sullivan, possibly. 23, just gonna cause him to retreat. But, um, so yeah, he can retreat to this hex here with Davy. These guys are gonna turn. So now Sullivan can actually go to the, he can be, he's now a three, which is gonna release these guys. Okay, now let's go back up here um, to Jinx. Jinx is now gonna fire on Fulkerson right here. One, two, three, four. So he's gonna be at strength of four. Roll to 62. 
Jinx, uh, I mean, Fulkerson is at a four. So he's going to be routine. Ooh, 65. Depleted and forced retreat to Hexus. that. Okay. Now we've got, um, let's see here. Now, yeah. Okay. I'm going to move these units here. Carpenter A and B and water, Waters. We're going to go one, two, three, four. Right here. All right. Robinson is going to use all of his movement to get back up here on top. Now oh, that's a steep slope. And the only way you can do that is by using all of his movement points if he's beside it at the start. So that's what he does. And uh, let's see, the Confederates are done, I think, with theirs. So no, we got Chew here. He was covered up by Burke. Um... I think if I move him there, I'll be able to shoot on those guys. So that's what I'm going to do with Chew. He's going to move to right there. Um, just Kimball. Okay. <coughs> Huntington. I'm just going to move up to here. And I think that's all for the artillery. So now we can go straight to. Uh, Right to our draw, to draw. And 
I think I may take a break. Right there. The kid draw. Okay. Bye. Girlfriend's dog's over here. <laughs> so, uh, we're going to stop right there. We're at the uh, 140 turn. Fixing to start the uh, chit draw. And uh, so that's where we're at. Uh, Union have a three point uh, lead uh, after only one turn. And we'll pick up uh, the next video with the 140 uh, turn at the chit draw. So, see you in the next video.